Good afternoon to you. We have a resource person that will talk to us on things that probably are not taught in the classroom. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people in here today. All twelve of you can decide to start working on the skills that you're going to learn today. All twelve of you can decide to throw it away and maybe just one person decides to pick up that idea and work with it. They say that the difference between a poor man and a rich man is that the poor man keeps passing over opportunities repeatedly and so he doesn't get to use any of the opportunities so he stays redundant he stays dormant doesn't do anything with the opportunities that come but the other person finds an opportunity grabs it and capitalizes on them and becomes a better person what am i saying you're here today you're welcome see how much you're going to hear how much you're going to see try to see how you can personalize all these experiences so don't be dull, try and learn all that you can today. So you're welcome. Thank you. You hear about career opportunities. Who knows what a career is? A career is a job that one does for a long period of time. A job someone does for a long period of time. Thank you. Any other idea? Yes. A career is what a person does to earn what a person does to earn a living. Thank you very much. Any other idea? Okay, everyone, mention one single career you know and maybe you're interested in. One career you know and maybe you are interested in. Whatever it is. Engineering. Yeah. Engineering. Doctor. Medicine, that would be. Arts. Arts. Mm -hmm. Think it Architecture. Out. Architecture. Engineering. Engineering. Okay, engineering is taking the day. Music, mm, entertainment. Okay, engineering. A round of applause to all of you. So once again, good afternoon, Mr. Borono Basi. Good afternoon. Sir. Good to see you on Passion TV. I'm from Akwaiwo State. I am a professional public relations person. By public relations, I mean I manage images in our know, organization, people, politicians, and that's what I make money from. So what I do is, if you have a crisis, for instance, because the world over, you're going to see that people are very, very interested in the image they send out. Organizations will not sell their goods if they don't have a positive image. For instance, you won't buy a particular kind of um, models if they don't have, you know, if they don't have, if they don't have a good image in the eyes of a customer. So what we do, or what I do as a person, is try to help organizations put up strategies where they send out a good image that will help their courses. Is it um, about patronage, about the kind of services they render and all that? Thank you very much. Do you understand the concept of image making? You probably would like to hear more about it. So that brings us back to you, Barano. Why do I have to hire a public relations officer to make my image to sell my brand well thank you very much um let me let me start by saying maybe 10 years ago you wouldn't have really had or 20 years 50 years back you wouldn't have really had course to say i want to hire a public relations person because you know the 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 information that we have hmm. back then or that we had back then were not enormous as we have now and so we're living in a world of more and more information people are speaking up people are saying things people are holding organizations accountable people are with just a tweet an organization can an organization can be brought down so in all of these noise in all of these um chaos, information, and, all chaos and all that so you're supposed to have you're supposed to be on the lookout on how people are perceiving what you're doing as a person, as an organization and all of that. And so image is everything in the world. Image is everything. The, the fact that people refer to America as God's own country is because they've consistently and deliberately pushed in a, a, an image of a society where everything know, is perfect, perfect. everything yes. is beautiful. And so, on television, you're going to find Syria. The pictures of Syria you're going to see are those ones that are deliberately sent to show us that that's a society of chaos. And so image is everything. If you want to go far in life, you want to go far, you want to succeed in business, 
personally as a person, uh, as a human being, you're supposed to have a positive image. And so that's, that's what I, I, that's where I come in, in all of these. I try to come in into your organization, into your life, and tell you the ways you could model your behavior, the things you could do, the strategies you could adopt to ensure that you send out a positive image to the world that could help in, in, the, in, 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 in the making of better patronage and all of that. So what are you passionate about? Well, um, a whole lot of things. I've come to realize that um, the internet opens up an array of, you know, things that we could, you know, new, new, new hobbies we could have. And so over the years, these few years, I've been very passionate, aside from, you know, the profession I'm in, which is public relations, I've been passionate about research as it has to do with the social media, the internet, and how these, you know, is finding a place in the lives of everyone. Because you discover most organizations right now, they're turning over to the social media because this is a platform where you can leverage and you have a whole lot, the numbers are enormous. Hmm. We have like millions of people, you know, on Facebook today, millions of people on Twitter, millions of people on Instagram. And so organizations and people see this as platforms for marketing their products, for sending the message out. So I'm passionate about, you know, trying to see how these fit into the lives of human beings going forward and what the, uh, the propensity these will have in our lives and our careers. Okay. Have you been able to make that passion pay your bills? Yeah. When, when I came in here, you saw that I'm, I, I had my luggages. From mm. here, I'll be traveling out. I have a client that called me up in Port Harcourt. I'm going to be there throughout the weekend. We put heads together and then I evolve strategies that would help that client to launch a new product that is taken into the market. So this is a typical example of how my passion, you know, trying to spot trends, you know, in consumer, consumerism and everything and, and trying to advise clients. This is a particular instance where this passion is paying me. Okay, we are going to round off soon, but let me come back to all of you. Are you still here with me? Yes. How many of us in here have Facebook accounts? I do, so my hand is up. So if you have a Facebook account, let me see your hand up. It's a bad thing to lie. If you have a Facebook account, actually, if you don't have, you're still in the 19th century, and that's <laughs> terrible. Okay, so majority of us have Facebook accounts. Please tell the children I watch here how to be careful, how to treat um, carefully on social media. I started by saying that um, the social media and the internet has thrown up an array of opportunities in terms of our career, in terms of our social life, you know, how we relate with people. It is open, you don't need to travel to America right now to have a friend. With just a tweet or a post you could have a friend sitting in America and then you converse, you talk about business, you talk about relationships and all that. This is an opportunity, you know, in itself. But then this is a huge distraction. I said earlier on that the social media, the internet has, you know, given us a enormous <coughs> amount of information. Human beings now possess billions, trillions, trillions of information the world over. But then this provides, this also throws up a challenge of distraction. Because with this information, with the enormous amount of information that we tend to get every time, there is a tendency for you to be distracted. There is a tendency for you to major in the minor and minor in the major. I have to confess, when I wake up and then maybe I say my prayers, the first thing I check is my phone. My phone has become a major part of my life. And there are times, because I'm very passionate about reading, there are times I just pick up a book to read and then you hear a sound of a phone, a sound of your phone, a beep from your phone, and then you realize that someone has sent you a message. Just trying to check that message, you can go into something else, go into something else, and from a second that you thought you were going to spend was by just reading that message. You are on Facebook, you're getting to Instagram, someone sends you a link to a particular video that's trending, and then you're watching. So it, it, it brings the issue of distraction. And so, but then again, having, I, I'm very impressed that a whole lot of you have social media accounts. That's yeah, I are already on Facebook. It also shows that there is you know, an opportunity for you to connect with people that are making impacts. When, when uh, you say, as it asked a lot of you what career path you're interested in, most of you said engineering. So I was hoping that, you know, when I started my career in public relations, what I did was basically to Google the names of people that are making a big in public relations.
just trying to see if they have articles, if they have books I can read, and, and then if they have Facebook accounts, I send requests. So what I do on social media basically is to try to mine information. By mining information, I mean I try to deliberately seek out for information and see how this information can help me in my career. And then I try to connect with these people. What should you seek out for in choosing a career? Well, the first thing, I, 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 it's very interesting that um, I'm on the set of Passion TV. So the first thing I would say is something you're passionate about. I heard someone mention music. When we're quite young, you wouldn't tell your mom that you want to do music. Your mom okay. Did. Because the image of music making we had then was the fact that people wearing bigger chains, living on alcohol, doing all sort of Doing drugs. Things. Okay. But so number one, passion is, passion is very important. in seeking for your career path. Number one thing you should look out for, we're told, is your passion. So once you, in, in, in the process of choosing your career, you're supposed to sit back and ask yourself, will this matter in 10 years? Will this be creative in 20 years? In, you know, in, with all of these, are there possibilities for me to, of switching you know, to another career that is similar and you know, the switching process is seamless and less cumbersome? I think also you also have to open your mind, be flexible, because today you're going to have someone who is an engineer being doing music you're going to have someone who is an engineer being a social media influencer mm -hmm. you're going to have someone who is a music person going to something else so you know, once you're choosing a, a career you're not supposed to be rigid you don't close your mind you also have to look out to what where the society is going school you know the, the school system is supposed to change in line with the society hmm. but sadly in Nigeria is not happening because in Nigeria most of what passes for as a school is where you get in and then get certificates you just pass get in there and then the 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 mood of instruction the way that the mood in which these children are molded hmm. does not fit into present realities I am going to give you time with them alone but for this moment please give to us some of the tips for self-development applications that you know these people can use and be learning so while they are using the internet to find entertainment and fun they could also use it to gain enough knowledge so okay um i see you as my brothers and my sisters and i wouldn't have to tell you the truth the truth that they might not tell you in school you're supposed to every day you're supposed to learn one new thing every learn, day one new thing one new thing be deliberate about seeking information the difference between you and the person who is not who will not prosper in 10 or 15 years will be on the amount of effort you put into seeking out and then getting information by the time you grab your parents phone if your phones are not connected to the internet i expect that once you grab your parents phone the thing you're supposed to where the first place you're supposed to find yourself is google and once you get to google please look out for something beneficial that you're going to learn i have some apps i would want to introduce you to applications 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 heading you know that you're going to that you you find very interesting because like i said like i told myself a couple of minutes ago the school system globally is changing the mm. wall the walls you know which define the school system are shrinking and so by that i mean that you no longer have to go to um, a particular um, geographical space to say that you're going to, to school people are getting the certificates you know online and all of that and so mm -hmm. i think um, one of the applications that I find very interesting, I've learned so much from, it's called Allison. We have the next one, Iversity. We have the next one, MIT Open Courseware, MIT. And then we have another very useful one, it's called TED, T-E-D. TED is an acronym for Technology, X Education and Design. BBC Future, BBC Future. We have Science Direct, Science Direct, and then the last one, Seriously Amazing, Seriously Amazing, hmm. Seriously Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing all of that with us. Um, what do you find in these applications? Well, for instance, for TED, once I recharge my data, I do more, I spend most of my data on TED. TED, we have Interestingly, we have a side that you know, 
you know, deals on kids like you, people um, doing amazing things. So these are ways you could get yourself inspired. These are information you could have because the world is moving at a very fast speed, a very fast uh, pace. pace. So at the end of the day, you might not know which information you would need in five, in 10, in 15 years from now. So just as much as you can, get this information, be deliberate, try to shut out those things that are not beneficial and try to seek out this information that will help you. Trust me, you might be sitting somewhere in um, New York in 10 or 20 years from now and then you realize that the information that will save you is the information that you had in 2017. Thank you very much. Any question to him? When, uh, last time I, entered, I went on Google, okay. I went to free basic okay. and I saw some applications like boost your brain, all the IQ, most of them. So are all these applications not the same as this? Well, basically what Boost Your Brain does is try to, you know, develop your critical and analytical skills. But most of these applications are where you could get course, you get to study some courses and get certificates for them. And so what this does is, is to help you to focus on a particular um, knowledge path. Like for instance, for TED, if you're interested in engineering, you could just get to the TED platform, type in engineering, and it shows you a whole lot of talks about what people are doing in engineering. You talked about being in school, like studying engineering, and that's not actually what we are being taught. Like, you're saying, if we are coming out into the society, we should not just take our and just go into the oil sector. So what other, what other things can we think of doing outside working in the oil sector if you are an engineer? Okay, I have a friend that studied mechanical engineering. Let me shock you. I, had a, I have a friend that studied mechanical engineering, graduated with some marks away from first class. And so, if it were to be in a society, the thing they sold to us, because he's someone is a member of my generation, the thing they sold to us was basically that if you get to school, study hard, get, come out with good grades, that you're going to make it in life. The war had moved on about that. So right now, he's gone into digital marketing. He's a digital marketer. He, what he does is try, he tries to you know, gather customers for particular organization. He studied mechanical engineering, but he's, right now, he earns a living from being a digital marketer. So what I meant when I said you should open your mind is don't feel that tomorrow you might end up having to you know, have a career in engineering, for instance, electrical engineering, even though you studied that in school. Open your mind to the vast array of opportunities that the world is throwing up every day. Right now, the society had moved on from just grades to skills. We're living in a skills economy. What can you do? What skills do you have? Are you an application developer? What application, for instance, can you get on the system and develop that can help people to solve problems. We have applications, for instance, that Facebook was someone's idea. I would also want to advise you, please, be very interested in ICT. ICT is the new oil. I heard most of you talked about um, wanting to go into the engineering sector. Engineering is very good because, of, of course, all of us cannot be ICT persons. We can't all be doctors. We can't all be uh, nurses and all that. But then ICT is very good. So if you are studying engineering, I also want you to look at how you can integrate ICT into engineering. How are you willing to take it? How are you willing to integrate it in what you're passionate about? Are you passionate about music? Are you passionate about teaching, for instance? How are you going to leverage on you know, the, the internet and then make a career and then become a renowned person in the world? It's very important. I'm talking to you as brothers and my sisters. Make effort to learn something new every day and then get very closer to the internet and deliberately seek out information that will help you to go far in life, make sure that while you're choosing your careers, you, you open your mind. You don't say, for instance, that I studied law in the university and I have to, you know, concentrate on making a living out of law. And then above all, all of it, try as much as possible to shut out distractions that the internet brings. It can be very distracting. 
So even if, as you, even if you're going into the university to study engineering, to study medicine, to study whatever you want to study, think of how you're going to integrate ICT into this to make it in life.